to Every Day is a New Day. Kim O'Neill from KimO'NeillCoaching.com. We are live. Hello and welcome to another episode of Every Day is a New Day. Inspired conversations about moving forward and choosing to embrace a positive outlook. I'm your host, Kim O'Neill. I'm also a personal empowerment and interview confidence coach and if you have found this interview, then you have probably found us either on YouTube or over on BingeNetworks.tv on the Every Day is a New Day cha channel. And I'm so happy to have you here. So however you have found us, please do go ahead and comment, like, share this out. Of course, you may have found this on Facebook as well. And we would love to connect with you, um, you know, after the show. So with that said, I'm going to introduce you to today's awesome guests. I'm really excited. You may recognize actually one of them I've already spoken to before. <laughs> today, <laughs> today we have with us Jody and Jess Plishka. Hello, you two. Hi, Hi Kim. Kim. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to share with our audience today a little bit about you guys, and then I'd love for you guys to, of course, fill us in more and share more about you. But so something I really love is what you have at the beginning of your bio. These two are the real life Gilmore girls. They are, <laughs> <laughs> they are a mom and daughter duo who are known for their incredible relationship filled with mutual ad admiration and respect and with one purpose in life, helping others. They're experts in how the mind works. They've been teaching their strategies to tens of thousands of people for nearly 30 years now. And there's so much more to know about them. But I think one of the biggest things is that they are now the co-hosts or the each host of the Mad Mom and Daughter podcast. How cool is that? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 30 years collectively. Yeah. Jess is only 22. 22. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do the math. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, no, it's really exciting. And uh, we just got on, we're on iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher and just about any platform you can think of. We're on there. Google Play Music, we're on there too. So anybody can find us anywhere now, which is so exciting. So that is yeah. very exciting. Yeah. Well, tell us more. How did that come about? What prompted you to want to start a podcast? I just, I mean, I've heard so much about podcasts and then watching you and everybody else and how successful Kim O'Neill's our hero. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like, energy. <laughs> like, like, you know, like you said, you know, I mean, we really just want to help people and we thought that that would be another really awesome platform to get our message out there and, you know, try to help people best we can. Yeah. I mean, I think we've done so much together. Like you said, 55 million people. I think it's like 60 million that have seen us from wow. ABC's American Adventure TV show, from Lifetime TV to ABC, NBC, Fox News, M Magazines. I mean, just Discover Wisconsin. We've just been busy beavers. Just chucking, along. <laughs> We're chucking along everywhere. But the one thing that everybody asks us um, is about our relationship. Right. And they're like, do you really have, like every time we comment something on Facebook, everyone's like, oh, we wish we had a relationship like you guys or do you really have such an awesome are you guys really that close and it's yes. like yeah <laughs> we we really are in our personal life I think we've been really um really seclus secluded you know we're we're pretty reclusive people okay. I mean I do a lot of interviews but socially a lot of people don't know what goes on behind the doors and I always say just as my 22 year case study because all my mindset techniques and everything have been put to, to, to the ultimate test. <laughs> so glad to be a guinea pig. Yeah, what do you think about that, Jess? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, I'm so happy with the way I turned out, not to sound really narcissistic, but like, I'm so blessed to be raised by my mom and, you know, her proudest accomplishment mm. is that she never, <laughs> never spanked me. And like, that was something wow. that was really huge, that respect. And um, yeah, I mean, I was just very, very blessed. Yeah, and I think it's fun that we can actually, I always say it's just it's coming out party. <laughs> She's coming out of the closet that, you know, as being behind me, you know, like in my footsteps. And now she's kind of like forging her own path. And she just graduated cum laude with honors. And she started a um, graduate program working towards her PhD um, in elite 
uh, graduate program, which is really awesome. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know she just got a, a graduate as, uh, assistantship right. that she wow. just picked up for a big scholarship. So I'm just so proud. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Jen. you. Thank so you. to me, it's like, it's so exciting. Like we really don't share a lot because when you're in the public side, you pretty much want to tell them what people want to hear, you know, and so th they'll watch the different episodes, you know, of the TV and things I've been on and, or with my headline and product or, you know, with our retrain your brain to master it all. And I do a lot of trainings and it's, and it's the first time that we're actually coming out showing, you know, our personal side of things, which is kind of, kind of interesting for us because we are so, um, so secretive or quiet or we yeah. just, we, private? we are, yeah, 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 we're very private. We're right, very right. private people. Yeah. So yeah, my mom is like, why do you guys want to do that? <laughs> She's like, you're sharing your life with other people. Like, why? Like, why do you want to do that? Put your hair on. No. <laughs> so, yeah. so put your wig on. You look better. <laughs> That's family for you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Jessica, take off your hat. Show me your pretty face. Don't wear the hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my God. Sorry, mom. We're doing everything you don't want us to do. Yeah. So I'm bald, and she's wearing a hat. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? What's so I can totally understand a family member, you know, coming from that perspective. But from other people that don't already know you guys, it's so awesome to see that you are sh showing up as you know what we're going to perceive as your authentic self. I mean, Jess, I've seen you wear that hat before in other pictures, yeah. and that's how I you know I connect with you. Oh, that's Jess, and it's fine. It's all good that she wears the hat. And you, you know, I think I'm a gangster that's gonna run. Oh my out. gosh, you just went to the grocery store. I know, there was this, this oh. guy who I used to play softball, and he was, you know, one of my friend's dads. And I haven't seen him in years, and he was running as like the mayor or something. Or, I don't know, some kind I don't of know, something political local official. So, right? and then he, he saw me, and we told him how I graduated. And then his comeback was, Oh wow, you're smarter than you look. And I'm like, because right, she yeah. was wearing a hat, and I'm we like, both yeah. were like, yeah, we're not going to vote for him. Uh, 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 what? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, it's interesting. I, I don't think people realize how their judgments show up. Yeah. When they show up, yeah. And we, we, I mean, we all have it. So that's why it's so cool. Like you, you guys have that understanding too. You have that psychology background right. to be able to rewire your own experience. Let's, let's right. go into that a little bit. Like, right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where do you start? Yeah. There's so much. Oh my god! But you know, you know that same experience happened to me when I went to the post office. Oh yeah. The the lady <sighs> when yeah. I walked in, and I always, I yeah, you usually go without. I always go without hair. a like yeah. yeah. I, I wear a bandana and a yeah. hat. Like we have a wall of hats, and so so like she, she had a photo shoot or something, and she was going. She had her hair on. And she walked in the post office and the lady's like, oh, wow, you look so pretty with your hair on. And it's like, what? So I, I didn't look pretty without it on. I'm like, no. pretty without it on. I'm like, you know, and then we just kind of like, I, I, I think I've taught Jess since she was really little that we don't let the comments from other people affect us. We just nice. really don't. We, we, we take it for what it's worth. I mean, it's like you when you were little. It, talk about when you were little, when you were like in third grade. Well, I mean, so I grew up in a predominantly white school district and I am part Asian. So, you know, kids really had never seen anything like me. I was like an alien. And uh, <laughs> so you're you a know, beautiful I mean, alien. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I but, agree. Um, yeah, you know, so I mean, kids, you know, you, you're a product of your environment. So maybe their parents, you know, had never hung around with anybody who was of different ethnicity. So um, a lot of comments that I got were, why do your eyes look different? Or why are they a different uh, shape? And, you know, and then everybody would, you know, pull their eyes back and then do that. And I'm like, oh, you know, and like, I never had thought of myself as being different. different. I mean, I grew up with a mom and I thought all moms are supposed to be hairless. And yes, I had all moms. hairless <laughs> cats. And I grew up in this world of beautiful difference. And I didn't know any difference. And, you know, I, I come home and I'm like, you know, talk to mom about it and she's like well you know the best thing that you can do is to provide that person with an education because that's the best way to reduce prejudice is providing an education and then eventually I was lucky enough to have my mom's award-winning children's books written just for me yeah, <laughs> to teach me <laughs> to teach me about about differences but right, yeah right. so Bella yeah. and Gizmo's Adventures yeah I wanted to put in a, a psychological rhyming fashion into the 
cats mouths so you know Jess would relate and out came my books and I worked with the American Cancer Society look and feel better program for like 15 years wow all, all alopecia support and they kept saying get them published get them published and I was like I never thought ever in a million years that I'd be a published author and so I said I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my mindset techniques, prime my brain. I'm going to say, okay, universe, let's do this. And I am now have three award-winning books. So I was really lucky. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. And Jess was the driving force for those books. And Jess was the driving force. We always like to draw pictures. And so we were up at our summer home and we were drawing pictures and our kitty, our bald kitty Gizmo jumped on top of us. And I just started writing, just started writing this story. And this, just this incident just happened. I think it was like, it happened on like a Thursday and then we went up North on a Friday. So I just, I started writing the books about that the cats being different and Gizmo being different because he's hairless. And I thought, wow, I can make this be synony synonymous with the way Jess is feeling right now of being different. And so I, I created this little book for her and then I did all the illustrations over time. You know, I, I did the illustrations when I was getting published, but um, yeah, it was a really awesome way for us to connect. And she had her own little book <laughs> that she read and, <laughs> and just Jess made her feel special. <laughs> How, what? how did you approach the students at school after your mom told you, well, you can teach them? How did you? Well, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I just tell them, you know, I look different because I'm part Asian and, and um, you know, you guys are what people would call Caucasian or white. And, you know, they probably, I mean, you're little, I was probably in kindergarten or first grade. Oh, so wow. like, you know, you have no concept of ethnicity or race or anything like that. So I'm like, you know, I'm different. I, you know, my, my mom is white and my dad is Asian. And, and that's why I, I look different. And Asian people just have, different facial characteristics. I mean, I'm sure I wasn't that well spoken when I was like five or six. I don't know about <laughs> that because I remember when we were, you were like eight and I think it was like when you were first grade, so maybe six, but remember when you were eight, when you were eight years old and we were in the pool with your friend? Oh, do you remember? Yeah, yeah remember I mean, my, yeah, my whole life, my friends, they're always, you know, they always say to me, you know, why do you, do, do you and your mom speak so smart? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand anything that you're saying. Why do you have to use such big words? And like, I'm like, I did not, not know that we use big words, you know, but, right? Right? Yeah. It's, like, it's just, it's just I, how my I mom raised. is really well read. I yeah. mean, she's oh, okay. such an avid reader and she's really intelligent. And so I think I was brought that way. I was brought up that way. And I never, ever spoke baby talk to Jess because I knew um, I was going through, you know, I just done my master's and my PhD work and, and I, all the studies that were coming out about kids and the adverse effects of speaking baby talk to them and, wow. and inhibiting their intelligence. And I thought, <laughs> two things I'll never do, talk baby talk or spank my daughter. Those are two things I never did. And um, it worked. See? <laughs> <laughs> She's a genius. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Well, okay, so you, you touched on it a little bit. Um, I know for those watching, yes, I did an interview with Jody Plishka before, and so if you'd like to watch that, you can definitely go to bingenetworks.tv and find the interview with Jody and hear all about Jody. But just to get people up to speed, for those wondering, well, yeah, wh why would she, you know, be wearing a wig or what's going on there? Will you just talk to them a little bit about how you had alopecia? Yeah, sure. I'll That's just, basically it, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's alopecia. <laughs> so my mom has alopecia universalis, and there's um, a couple different types of alopecia. Basically, <laughs> alopecia is where a person <laughs> loses their hair because they have too many white blood cells, and white blood cells think that hair is an infection, so they kill it off. So these people who have alopecia are really healthy. Mom says she's superwoman. I'm a superwoman. <laughs> Super healthy. You are. <laughs> except for they think hair is an infection, but right. um, so alopecia universalis is where you lose the hair over your entire body. No hair, wow. and even in And the, she's jealous. I know. I, I don't have to shave my- I know. You, I have arms are <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. No gray hair. It's no gray like, hair. Oh, so no, unfair, it's but like, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, and then I mean, there's also alopecia areata, where the um, people lose Just spots sucks. of hair, and then alopecia okay. totalis, which is kind of sounds like total, so total loss of hair, uh, just on the head. Just on the head. Yeah. So, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. And it's obviously not a genetic thing, right? Because Jess has hair. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there are new studies coming out, but I don't think it is really. No, they found a G gene that was mm -hmm. manipulated into an H gene. So they've done tests like in mice 
And there's um, Dr. Cristiano, she's at Columbia University and she's brilliant and she also has alopecia, but alopecia, we don't have cancer and we're not sick. So it really is like one of those second tier, third tier, fourth tier, you know, okay. that people are going to spend money on researching, which, and rightfully so. I mean, if I had my druthers and I, you know, wanted money, there was a million dollars to go towards alopecia research or cancer research. I would say cancer research without even thinking twice. So I would much rather the funds go towards um, people that have cancer to help you know, cure that rather than alopecia, because although it's a psychological disorder for a lot of people, because it's really difficult once you lose your hair. And I went through that for a year. I went through a really dark black phase where I hated everybody and hated everything until I really figured out what my calling was in helping others. And the more I told my story, the more I was able to help reach people. And then the more I reach and help people, the more I'd help myself because I felt really good about doing that. So, but I'm a little different than a lot of people. So Jess and I started one of the largest alopecia support groups called Alopecia Universalis. Nice. We started that like eight years ago or yeah. 10 years ago, something, and we co-admin that too. So um, we help with our, you know, mindset techniques and, and, you know, just really help people understand how to live being different and you know, it's a choice. And I always tell people you can laugh or cry. And I say, choose laughter because it causes less wrinkles. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Well, if, if people want to find out more about that support group, where can they go to find out about yeah, that? Yeah. So it's actually on Facebook. It's, it's, it's Alopecia Universalis. I mean, how do you, <laughs> you got to S A L I S universalis. S A L I S universalis. So awesome. go to Alopecia yeah. Universalis. Right. Right. Wonderful. Okay. Well, okay. So on the last show, I, I'm, pretty certain I asked Jody, what does every day is a new day mean to you? So I would love to now ask Jess, what does every day is a new day mean to you? Well, I think that, you know, the possibilities in life are endless. And we always like to say, you know, life is what you make it and, you know, make it your best life, make possible. It your best life possible. So, I mean, you know, you could be having a really bad day, but tomorrow is a new day. Every day is a new day. Or if you're just a super positive person, every day is a new day because you're going to keep progressing with what doing what you love and find that ultimate success. And life is amazing. And, every and it day, doesn't matter yeah, how many steps forward you take as long as you're in the right stepping in the right direction. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, and I notice. I'm curious what your thoughts are, are, are on this. I noticed that a lot of people have, um, there's like a little bit of a stigma attached to the word positive. Like some people are like afraid to like go near that word. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. That's why we get along so well. We <laughs> but I'm admiration club. Right? Thank you. Yes, I, I agree. That's one of the things I love. That's one of the things I love about you too. Um, but have, have you noticed that? And do you have any thoughts to share on that? Yeah. I mean, we, we talk about that in our podcast too, that negativity is a baseline emotion. It's so much easier to choose over positivity. And, you know, that association with even just the word positive, like you said, it's yeah. so much harder to be positive than to be negative. I mean, you kind of see what's going on in the world. You kind of feel this negativity because it's so much easier than positivity. I mean, for some people like you, Kim and us, you know, like yeah. it's easier. It's to a be, conscious decision. It's a conscious decision. It's I mean, a conscious decision. Yeah. You, yeah. And it's something that like we, we talked about in one of our latest episodes about laughter. Like we laugh every single day and no matter what, like I was explaining to people, not only do we laugh at things, but somebody laughs at me every day. <laughs> She's a funny gal. She's her, <laughs> your face is like, <laughs> what do you mean you no, laugh like, at her? Like, you know, like, I'll like, I'll like <laughs> the other day, well, we talked about this on our podcast and I'll just share it with you now because those of you who hear this are going to want to really listen. Oh yeah. <laughs> so the other, why don't you start talking? So then, it was just, it was really silly. It was late at night and I was in my mom's room, we were just talking. It was like one o'clock in the morning. Which we, we do, do that a lot. Time. Just like stay up talking and laughing. That and is so cute. We, yeah. just, we had just <laughs> we gone. We parties yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, do, we do pop popcorn and watch movies. We do. Yeah, yeah. we do it. But yeah, no, so we had just gone swimming. And all of a sudden, she's like itching her ear. And it made this really high pitched, like squeaking, like almost like a bird chirping noise. And I'm like, what was that? And I'm 
like, what? Well, she's like, did you hear that? And I'm like, yeah, did what was that? that? I couldn't. Like, did you hear that? I'm and like, was it just me? I couldn't tell you if you paid me what it was. I'm like, what, what was that? And she's like, oh, it was my ear. I'm like, what do you mean it was your ear? Like, your ear doesn't make noises. <laughs> so long story made short is I tape recorded it. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Who picks up you the phone and tapes recorded it? <laughs> and like, get to my ear and it's like, sweet, you should pull it up. No, I, I know. And so, so like, squeak, 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 squeak. And Jeff was like laughing, busting yeah. a gut. And I'm like, it sounded like a bird. Oh I'm like, God. sounds like the birds that wake me up in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> and so I put that, it's in our podcast. You can go listen to yeah, it. It's yeah. in the, the sound effect is there. So yeah. you, you can't you it now, but if you want to go, you can listen to it. Okay, that's a way better story than what I thought you were going to share. I thought you were going to share a story about someone like literally like making fun of you, laughing at you or something. No, no, oh, no, no, no. Okay, we, good. Oh, no, no. no. It, it, you know, the way people communicate with one another, this is another thing we talk a lot about, is if you <clears throat> have a communication that you're always being negative with somebody, as we said, baseline emotion. So if I'm continuously like, do this, and she's like, do that, and then I'm like, whatever, whatever. That negativity is something that, um, you know, a lot of people share in their relationships, but being able to really focus and being positive and choosing to be happy, I purposely do funny things and we laugh every single day. And <laughs> I mean, every day without yeah. bar none. <laughs> and it's because I make the conscious choice to do that. Like I'll do something really silly, like the way I'll, I'll make a face and I'll, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll look a certain way. And, and we then, were just in the, and we went to a doctor's <clears throat> appointment and we were in the elevator and all of a sudden it was like this rickety old elevator and she's going like this and she's like, oh my God, the elevator's going to fall. And I'm like, no, I'm busting a gut because I'm like, who does that? Like, we're just, just like funny, silly things, you know, just, just silly things. Every like, day. <laughs> like, like we were walking into to Walmart, you know, to, to get some strawberries and there was like a big string of toilet paper and I'm like... <laughs> Let's just like tuck that in your sock and walk around and then like like observe oh it. Oh my god! Look at you, you know. And- <laughs> just, I feel yeah, for you. I just yeah. flashbacks of me and my mom being goofy. Oh, yeah. oh, you guys. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, we do that like little things like that all yeah. the time, all yeah. the time, and and I, I think it's become a habit for me to consciously do that for Jess, which I think is is super funny. Because, I mean, I know that I'm going to get a rise off of her. I know that she's going to, you know, start cracking up. And so it's just our way of communicating with each other, you know, is we, that that's become our communication. And if she's stressed out, like I'll, I'll say something or I'll do something or I'll make a look or whatever, or I'll just come up behind her and I'll give her a big hug and she's really angry and I'll just give her a big hug and I'll be like, come on, Jess. You know, she's like, oh gosh, I can't help but not be angry you know it's a it's a conscious choice of how you choose to react and since i brought her up for 22 years just the two of us it's been it's been really easy and we have that like twin empathy thing going on like we always finish each other's sentences sentences, always (laughs) (laughs) that's that's the fun and annoying i bet (laughs) no it's it's really it's really good it is it's 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 really weird like it it's like uncomprehendable if that's a word. Wow. Um, yeah, you can't comprehend it. No, can't yeah, comprehend can't it. Comprehend but like that. Yeah, I mean we'll sit there thing. watching TV and we'll make the exact same comment about the exact same thing at the exact, exact same, same time. time. And it's just like we why did each other like, why did you say that? Like, why, why did, did you, you say that, that at the exact same time? Like why? why? <laughs> I'm like, why? Like why did you like we always yeah, we always yeah. We I always... think that's the that's like the nature versus nurture debate. I think that's very nurture because I was only I mean, this was it. It was just us and my you know, my grandparents, we lived in New York and they lived in Wisconsin, so we we didn't have, you know, any I didn't have anybody else to really mimic or mirror. So I think that's that's a, a nature Poor kid. <laughs> Well, you guys are very in sync, obviously. And the thing that I that I love that you mentioned earlier is that it becomes a habit. So it's not like it has to necessarily be an every moment conscious decision. Oh, wait, no, I need to be positive. I need to be positive. I need to be positive. It's like it's like anything. The more you practice it, it starts to become second nature and it becomes part of who you are. And you don't just do it just to do it. There's actually value in it and it makes the rest of life easier. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Right. And you hit it right in the head when you said there's a value in it. Especially during the challenging times. I mean, it's, you may think that the challenging times, there's no room for positivity. No, that's what actually can help support you in moving through that. It might still be challenging, but you've, if you've already started to 
wire your brain that way, develop that habit, it can actually support you. And there will always be new things that come out of the fields, you know, right. in life. Right. So that's, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's why I love that you guys, yeah, see the value in that. And thank you for, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing that a lot of people that, you know, that we like to teach, especially in our Retrain Your Brain to Master It All program, are the two components that most either entrepreneurs or just anybody that everybody misses out on. One is mindset and two is attitudes and beliefs and habits, making sure that you have the right habits. So exactly what you're talking about, you know, it's, it's, it's just really important that, you know, people understand once again, they have a conscious choice to live their life by their own design, by their own hand, how they want to do it, or they can live by default, which is just by, you know, the baseline emotion every day, just doing yeah. the same thing over and over again. I mean, it's your life. You only have one life to live, so make it the best life possible. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. I love that. So, okay. You guys have already talked a little bit about, um, you know, just about life experiences, right? Alopecia and the kids at school. How, you know, what else has led you to, to where you are today? And how did you transition into where you are now? Oh, man. I mean, all, all of our, our, I mean, one of the big things was both of our backgrounds in psychology. Obviously, my mom, you know, has her master's and PhD work, and I'm following in, in her footsteps, I guess. And just that absolute desire and seeing the need to, you know, bring some positivity into the world and, simply and help people. Yeah, and really just help people. And, you know, especially in the world today, everything seems like it's, it's very heavy and, and very negative. And we kind of just want to, shine that light and just bring a little bit of happiness, even if it is just for 30 minutes, you know, a week to people. And, and, and if we can help to teach them something as well, like that's really our main goal. It so. is. And like I said, you know, we just, I felt it was time, time to, you know, let Jess come and shine with me and, and share. I mean, we're really fortunate. I mean, we have such an amazing relationship. I mean, I'm best friends with my mom and, and our, my dad as well. And Jess is best friends with grandma. I mean, it's, it's the way we've learned and the way that, um, you know, we, we communicate with each other based on, you know, it, it is positivity and not that we're always positive because we have our own negative moments and both live pretty stressful lives with just with school now yeah. and, and me with, you know, being a single parent, I mean, it's not always easy, but it's possible. It's possible to be able to do that. And we show people how to have that right information at the right time in the right order. And if you have that, you can, you can do anything. You can have, you can change any really bad relationship into a good relationship if <laughs> the other person's yeah. a willing participant. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, if you're a willing participant. Just what, what have you noticed? I feel like it's such, um, it, you're such a nice case study <laughs> for someone. Years. Yeah. I, that's, that's awesome. What have you noticed, you know, compared your upbringing compared to other people, other kids, you know, has any, what stood out for you as far as, you know, how so many things that stand out. I mean, I feel like there's a typical way that parents raise their kids and that's authoritarian. Authoritarian is not to be extreme, but it is known as like the Hitler mentality. So you do what I say, it's my way or the highway. Do what I say or you're grounded. You do that, you're grounded. You know, there's a very, um, you know, like the parent is up here and the child is down here. The parent always talks down to the child. And I was lucky because my mom raised me with an authoritative parenting style where you talk to your kid and the parent and the kid are on the same level. You speak to them one-to-one. -one. They have a temper tantrum. You don't walk away and leave them on the floor. You go to them, you get down and you say, you know, what, what's the matter? You know, talk to me. What, you know, what's upsetting you? You know, talk to them on that one-to-one -one level. And um, the, the one thing that I see with other kids and their parents is just that respect, um, how it's very lacking, um, yeah, you know, both, know. both ways, you know, the, the kids always, always going to be treated like a kid and always going to be seen as a kid in the parents eyes. And the parent is always going to be kind of seen as the big bad guy, you know, <laughs> the big bad guy. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, it's really sad to see. And, and, you know, kids always talk about their parents behind their backs and how they're going to do things to try to go around what the parent says. And it's this big game with them. And, 
my life has been, I'm really lucky because it's been relatively drama free because I don't have to worry about, you know, going behind my mom's back or trying to do all these. You I don't know, think you ever have. Thing. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Because no. we mean, talk about everything. Yeah. We have I mean, that open yeah. line of communication. That's Definitely. nice. But yeah, so that's, yeah, that's really one of the big things. Awesome. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Jody. for someone who might say, well, I'm not supposed to be my kid's friend, you know, it, I mean, it clearly sounds like you were doing more than that, but how do you respond? <laughs> Has anybody ever said that to you? Um, not really, because okay. I'm so much her parent first and foremost. I mean, I'm, there is a hierarchy. And when it really comes down to it, we understand that a mom and your daughter, I mean, that's really important that the kids have that respect. And when you have that authority, authoritarian um, instead of authoritative when you have that empathy and you get along and you're able to have that lightheartedness and really respect and understand your child like Jess would come home and say oh the sky is blue and most parents are like yeah whatever you know like they're <laughs> their kids you know whatever you yeah. learn something and they go about their way I'd be like that's awesome tell me more like I've been always been a proponent of academia having you know been in higher education myself so I always was encouraging Jess from the very beginning that she was going to go to college she knew when she was in kindergarten she was going to college I knew when I was in kindergarten I was going to college that's it's something that's genetic my my parents thrust that upon me I did that to my daughter like I'm like this is just what it is and it's that cognitive priming of her brain she knew that that's just what it was going to be I mean no ifs ands or buts about it that was what was best for her and we as parents, um, it's really important that people out there know that your prefrontal cortex um, isn't developed until you're 25. And the prefrontal cortex is the um, decision making. So a lot of kids don't make really good decisions, especially when they're in high school, like they have to drink and smoke and you know, they start to do the sex and stuff like that. But it's, it's you don't want to say that it's not really their fault, but really... I mean, they don't have that prefrontal cortex developed, which is reasoning. So I was always there for Jess through everything, like explaining everything to her. I didn't say, don't do drugs or don't have sex. I would explain to her why, you know, it's a good reason to abstain. And, and Jess has never done drugs in her life, never drank, never smoked. Um, you know, same with the sex. I mean, she's decided not to do that. I mean, that's her own decision. I gave her all the education. And like I always said, education helps people to reduce any type of prejudice or any miss, you know, the 50% of what I gave to Jess, the genetics she has, 50% of my genetics I gave to Jess. Now, when kids, they can do one or two things. When they decide to rebel and they decide that they want to do something different, what they're doing is they're going against what their parents' beliefs and attitudes and wishes are. And it's at that particular time in their life that they feel so stressed out, they have so much anxiety, so much stress, um, so much overwhelm, you know, because they're they're growing, going through puberty, they're, you know, they have to deal with their grades and their friends and all this great stuff. And that's when when your ideas, what Jess was doing and what I was telling her to do, when that's congruent, um, it eliminates that cognitive dissonance. And I think parents need to, to really understand that it's that open communication that allows the kid to be able to grow. Like Jess wore two different socks growing up always. She always wanted to wear two different colored socks. And I let her do that. My mom had a fit, you know, I'm like, Hey, let her, let her be a kid. Then she wanted to wear her hat all the time. So we had a, Oh, a plethora of hats, you know, and she loved to wear her hats. And I said to her, let her be an individual. Let her do what she wants to do, which makes her feel like she's in control of her life. So I think parents need to pick and choose what they need to try to control based on the prefrontal cortex not being developed or what the kid, you know, they want to grow their hair long, they want to dye it, they want to do whatever. If that's not going to hurt them and it's going to make them stand out and feel more individual, I think a parent should embrace that, you know, and nowadays with the LGBTQ <laughs> community, I'm yeah. just kidding, but you know, the, the with it is, and then it's, and yeah. it's also, there's all, all, there's also one more and I'm missing, I apologize, but uh, you know, is it a LGBTQ? Yeah. I don't know what the newest one is. I've whatever, whatever it is, but you know, people need to understand that 
you know, their kids are born a certain way and they need to let them just be who they are and love them no matter what, no matter who the person is, you know, no matter what they become, they're always still that loving same person inside. And I, I really, I don't want to, you know, go on a tangent about that, but I just think a parent should love their kid regardless of anything, you know, unconditionally. And that's what we've done together. What do you think, what, what kind of advice would you have for a parent who wants to be more supportive and foster creativity and individuality in their kid, but maybe they're struggling with that? Um, a lot of times it, it, it simply comes with communication. And sometimes if a parent and a child, they don't have that communication, what they can do is start writing each other little letters. That's the best thing to do because when you're not feeling threatened and you're going to write a letter and say, Hey mom, this is how I'm feeling right now. And the kid can just simply write whatever they need to write without anybody watching them or, and then have the parent read it when the child's not there. So they can't interject or, you know, have that mean face or anything that's going to make the child feel they can read it and then they can respond without being emotional. I think emotions cloud judgment always. So it's really important, especially with these kids that are, you know, clashing with their parents is to remove that emotionality. And by writing letters to each other, um, by texting each other, I mean, we still text each other. I love doing that. And I tell her like a hundred times a day, I love you, you know, big hugs, big kisses, mama loves you, you know, love you. I mean, I love to let her know that I love her, you know, it's really important and parents should do the same thing. It's not always telling your kid, don't do this, don't do this, take this out, do that, do that. It's not about that. It's all about, you know, just having that open communication. So, I mean, if you don't want to write it on a piece of paper, like send some, send your kid an email or write them a text, have a conversation through text because, you know, we've done that and it takes out all that emotionality. And believe me, you'll have a resolution a lot quicker when you don't have those fiery hormones flying. So. Wonderful advice. I love it. So, so <laughs> Jess, what are your plans? You're still in college. What, where do you see taking your psychology yeah, yeah. I graduated actually, yeah, in just a couple months ago. And so I moved on. Now I'm in an elite master's program and I'm working toward my PhD. And I really want to, you know, become <laughs> like my mom and be able to help people and really help um, more with the more, I guess, counseling aspect of our Retrain Your Brain program, okay. um, you know, and really just be able to, to help people that way. But yeah, I really want to be able to learn as much as I possibly can. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> well, tell us more. Okay, so you started your mom and daughter podcast. What is your vision for, for this podcast? Oh boy. I mean, I keep saying we just want to help people. I mean, we really do. We just want to we help do. people. We do want to yeah. reach the unreachable. We want to, we talk about simple living. I mean, our lives are really complicated, but underneath it all, there's pure simplicity. And everybody out there nowadays is focused on extrinsic motivation, like going for the mighty buck and getting the bigger car and the big house. And we have the nice car and the big house and everything, but we have something greater than that. We have the intrinsic motivation, which is really, we want to help people be able to find their purpose. We want, we want to work with mission driven, value driven people like you, Kim. <laughs> That's why we get along and you're part of our mutual admiration club. I am. Yes. <laughs> but we just really want to reach out and, and show people, you know, we talk about silly stories, we talk about things, but then there's always um, training. So I always go back and I figure, my goodness, you know, I, especially since I lost my hair, I have 31 years of experience of mindset of how to help people and, you know, to grow their businesses, to grow deeper relationships, to be able to, you know, start volunteering and maybe have better health, you know, everything. That's what our goals are is to, to help people through a simplistic, you know, way. We're not going to be battering them down and there's so much junk on the internet. I know there's always every, you, I'm sure you log on to Facebook and all you see is someone new every day teaching you how to make a million dollars or how to be the best person you can be. I mean, everybody is an expert nowadays and it's so hard to figure out who is really telling the truth and who's just, you know, a scam artist. And so, but, yeah, that's part of like what we're doing is yeah. kind of like enlightening people to help them see that 
you know, maybe some of these people aren't the best. And we kind of teach people how to, you know, search and, and make sure that the person's credible. And, nice. you know, we, we kind of, I guess we're, we're talking about a lot of different things. Like we are one of our last um, episodes, we were talking about the, the show diet land. Did you ever see it? It's on AMC. Uh -oh, uh, I've heard of it. It's an awesome. It's an awesome. There's only two episodes left, but you'll have to watch it when it comes back on or look back or something. But we want to try to have our podcast be intelligent um, radio and really explain to people like we were talking about stereotypes. Right. Yeah. And how, you know, I think, what was the, the statistic on, it was like some astronomical. 25 million people yeah. have anorexia in yeah. the United wow. States. 25 million people suffer, and it's men and women. Yeah, and like, I think it was like something along the lines of like 80% of women don't like the way they look, and like even 60% of men don't like the way that they look, and it's just it's terrible because, you know, this the standards that society pushes upon us, and we all try to meet them and fit into them, and yeah. Yeah, so, so we talk about things like Amy Schumer when she yeah she talks about the Kardashians and she's like is that really the best role model for little girls like <laughs> these women who take their faces as a light like suggestion, suggestion. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah no but yeah. it's true yeah. yeah and then you know Jess is a um, videographer and she's a published photographer she's been published and her videography she's been published and um, a lot of times you know, people ask her to whiten their teeth or make oh, yeah. them look thinner. Yeah, just any kind of, <laughs> any kind of. <laughs> oh, was that you, Jody? That was you, Jody? <laughs> yeah, you know that. That's <laughs> I don't need the teeth whitening thing, yeah. but. <laughs> no, but like that stereotypical photo, you know, photo. Yeah. Shop, you know, um, a lot of people want done. They want to not look like themselves. And I think that one of the most beautiful kind of photo that I can take of somebody is that candid you know, showing exactly who they are. Like, if you have, like, a blemish or, like, a zit, like, sure, I can get rid of that. But, like, removing everything that makes you unique is kind of pointless. You know, it just removes your uniqueness. So I we talk so. about, I don't know yeah. if you ever watched The Fairly Odd Parents. And if not, no. It's, no, it's a kid, it's a kid show. <laughs> it's a kid show. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. It's, it's, okay. a, it's good. Yeah, it's a kid show that was on um, when I was young, and now it's, it's like, considered to be retro and I feel I really know. old and but um you know, there was this one episode where um everybody was a gray blob and the whole world was just one big gray blob and the main star he was pink and he stood out and everybody looked at him like he was had some disease or something you know like he, he was, was crazy because I told Jess I'm yeah. red you know <laughs> stand out yeah I'm red right now and I'm trying yeah, to be right. confident <laughs> It's okay, Kim, you laugh and you <laughs> get red. <laughs> yeah. So what we talk about is, is, is really trying to get people to understand that the world doesn't have to be gray. And then we, we got into about, um, you know, the big makeup manufacturers and oh, wow. yeah. you know, they're the ones that created the stereotypes. the stereotypes. They're the ones that are telling women they have to look a certain way. And we as women are falling into that. Because it's so amazing when you look back at history and you go, wait a second. It used to be the women that were, like, really big with, like, the but big... But cellulite the big, was sexy. Yeah, you know? like, right. And they, like, parade around and the men yeah. fall for them. <laughs> exactly. The cherubs and, like, all the women were, like, plump and robust and they had, you know, nice figures to them. And, and cellulite was 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 fine i mean cell cellulite was like sexy mm -hmm. and then they're like oh let's get they know. said that uh, it was it was um revered until a doctor said that it wasn't until the doctor said and then it wasn't. the doctor said that it wasn't and then all of a sudden it just went all downhill from there and right. just exactly yeah and so we're playing into that it's like who's to tell you that your hair has to be a certain way, or you have to wear, you know, your makeup, or you have to cover your beautiful face. The one thing about Jess, everybody should know is she's never worn a stitch of makeup in her life. So all this right here is 100% natural. Those lips, 100% they're, they're not lipstick. No, it's 100% natural. Yeah, nothing. She's never worn wow. makeup in her life. And and that's her own choice. You know, my mom would of course would say, You should put away the makeup, you know. <laughs> cut what? your cut your hair. Cut your hair I'm like, I'm like just <laughs> let her be, you know, who she is. I think she's perfect just the way she is. And I think that is how Jess grew up with so much self confidence because I just let you be exactly who you are. And I never wanted to change that. And I think 
having Jess was the greatest thing I've ever done for myself in my life because (laughs) I was suffering from, you know, I didn't, I didn't like my self image. And I grew up thinking all women were like, you guys had beautiful long hair and beautiful long eyelashes. And I had really long eyelashes. And, and then, you know, I had Jess, you know, I was in an abusive relationship prior to having Jess and, you know, and then I had Jess and I, I realized, Oh my God, this is what unconditional love is. And it was the greatest thing that ever happened in my entire life. I had this little person that loved me, (laughs) hair, no hair, eyelashes, no eyelashes, makeup, no makeup. And it was the greatest, most wonderfully liberating time of my entire life. And I think having Jess and watching her grow, I grew too. So it helped me grow as a person um, emotionally. Um, you know, it really helped me grow. And then the more education that I had about, you know, what was happening and how I was reformulating my neural sequencing and how I was getting rid of my old, you know, negative internal beliefs that were holding me back. And, and I was able to move forward in my life and live the life that I really wanted to live. The more that I said, oh my gosh, I want to help other people do this. And I waited until I was, you know, until I thought, I think, until I think, say that again, (laughs) until, you know, I thought that, you know, can I get it together? Now, now I'm going to go back and do more research. Cognitive neuroscience changes every eight years. So I wanted to be updated with that update with behavior psychology. Jess was graduating and I thought this is no better time than the present now, because now I can actually prove to people that what I'm teaching in my program works. So that's how we released um, our Retrain Your Brain. We have an introductory course. We have a 10 minute free 10 minute training. We have five 10 minute modules that we put together because we want people, if you're afraid, you know, step on in there and and try it out. Yeah. And it's completely free, of course. So that's the cool thing about it is, you know, you're not tied down anything and it takes you as long as it takes you, you know, take your time, do it as quickly as you can, whatever you want to do, it's there for you. And And then we have an intro course and the intro course is, is, it's, it's, um, basically like the beginning half of the full retrain your brain to master doll program, you know, perfect for people who aren't ready to fully commit, you know, to make that change yet, which is totally Mm -hmm. fine. And that's available to them as well. So where where can people find out about that? Yeah. So we have, our website is jodyjess.com. So J O D I J E S -S S.com. Okay. And then we're on Twitter and Instagram and everything as Jody Jess pod Mm -hmm. P O D. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then awesome. now we're on, like I said, Apple's, Apple iTunes yeah. and Stitcher, Stitcher, um, um, Google Music, and, Google Music uh, and what's the other one? Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and do, more that are coming. Yeah. So. <laughs> do, new, do new episodes come out at a certain time every, every week or when can people expect? Yeah, we're trying to aim for new episodes every Monday, but around now we're kind of just releasing them to get people, yeah, because we want to release as much as we can so people, you know, learn as much as possible. But yeah, we're aiming for once a week. Once a week, but Mm -hmm. we want to try twice a week. Yeah. With our full full schedules, we're going to try twice a week. We're going to try, but at least once a week. (laughs) Awesome. Jess, I want to ask you a question. What do you do to help boost people's confidence when you're in the middle of a photo shoot with them? Any tips? Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is be yourself. And a lot of people are like, I don't know what that means. Like, what do you mean be myself? I'm like, what would you do in this situation? Like, what's your favorite thing to do? Before we even have a photo shoot, I'm like, what are your hobbies? What are your favorite thing to do? Maybe you're a musician, you play the saxophone. We're going to have a photo shoot with you and your saxophone because that's what you love. Or maybe you're an animal lover like me and you want to take pictures with your cats all the time. That's cool. You know, we'll take pictures with you and your cats, you know, (laughs) or you love being outside. You just want to be outside. You know, I really, I really want to find what makes that person unique so that I can showcase that to the best of my ability and really give them an image that they're happy and they feel reflects their self image and yeah so I mean I just be yourself and relax just you know don't don't pose and all these weird things oh my god and don't do this (laughs) yeah the duck oh my gosh (laughs) yes don't do that I know know. or do this (laughs) (laughs) yeah all the girls that are always like Or like, or you have the ones that are like Chandler on Friends, where they show up and they're like, and then they're like, they have no, yes, yes, they're like smile and they're like. like I, I was just watching an episode of Friends the other day, and there was Ross doing, 
Yeah. Like, trying to be the cool guy when it was clearly awkward for him. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a little hard. Some people don't quite get it, and I got to teach them, you know, just smile naturally, and they're, they just, they don't get it, but that's okay. <laughs> and make sure you have the Duchesne marker every time you smile, mm. which are the little wrinkles by your eyes, the Duchesne Squint marker. Squint your eyes a little bit. Squint your eyes, it makes and it then smile, because then it makes it look like it's real. Yeah. So if you just smile like this, <laughs> it's not real, but if you squint your eyes a little, because then you have, you, 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 in, get your uh, Duchenne marker working, and then you smile. So, so do some people's, I feel like my eyes naturally do that, but do some people's, like, when they smile, these don't naturally also? Yeah, no, because no. if you were going to pretend to smile, Kim, like this. That's not, yeah. See, see my eyes? Yeah, you can no. just, my eyes aren't doing anything but you. Yeah. That, smile. Yeah. You're, probably, you're just good. You're, you you're naturally. Just naturally <laughs> you're just naturally. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really good at it too. Kidding. So my eyes are, you know, they already, they already do it. So it's like, I'm good to go. And then just open your eyes. Just like, open your eyes. I am. You know what? I'm going to circle this right back around to positivity because I think that that would naturally happen if you've already got this momentum of positivity and lightness within you otherwise if you feel you're having to force a smile and you can only go that far then that means you haven't triggered the feeling within you for it to actually be natural that is a fantastic tip jody to go ahead and squint your eyes i love it <laughs> oh, awesome smiling jazz you take photos like I'm like, you, you after like a speaking event and I'm so tired, I'm wiped out. And the last thing I want to do is take pictures. And she's like, come on, let's get a picture for the, I'm like, she's like, come on, mom, smile. I am smiling. <laughs> well, I know, I know you're saying, you know, with the positivity and laughter and all that few, you know, fewer wrinkles, but honestly, I feel like I've got more wrinkles because of that. <laughs> and I'm no, fine with it. Oh, <laughs> imagine the ground. It takes something like, and I, and I, I don't know this for sure, but we'll pretend it takes something like. 12 muscles to smile and 50 mu muscles to frown. Yeah. Oh, is that the difference? Wow. Yeah. And I don't know the numbers, so I'm not right. I'm not okay. right on that. But it's something like that. It's something like, we'll just say it takes an astronomical amount of um, muscles in your face to frown. Interesting. It only takes a couple to smile. Yeah. So that's why it literally causes less wrinkles because <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Well, I, you know, Hey, I love smile wrinkles or whatever. Eye wrinkles even. That's all good. <laughs> I know. I know. Makes a person who they are. It you shows it. your, shows your, your, your journey that yep. you've been yeah. on. So yeah. people Absolutely. should stop Botoxing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, Botox yeah. can kill you. Trust oh, yeah. me. I have a book from a friend who, who was almost killed because of Botox. Wow. Wow. Well, we are nearing the end of the show. It's been wonderful just getting to talk to you and hear your perspectives, hearing part of your journey and how you two interact with each other. Before we final ra finally wrap up, is there anything you really want the audience to know about you two that you haven't shared? I don't know. We're pretty open books. I mean, I'm not really sure. That there's, no, yeah, but no. I mean, I, I think what they should know is, you know, we're not trying to get people to be like us. We want you to be like the best version of yourself. Right. I love think it. that's what we both really love doing is we want to try to bring out the best version of you and we want to really help you, you know, think and, and ignite your critical thinking skills to think, is this really the life you want to be living or do you want to make some changes? You know, that's what we really are trying to help people do. So that's what our, our, our show is about. And what do you say to someone who says, there is no other way. I've, you know, I've lived 50 years the same way. Nothing ever changes. It's because they've made their life be that way. That's their mental habit, you know, and, and it's really hard for a lot of people to change that. You can change. No, you you can. can teach an old dog new tricks. You can. It just takes time. And it takes 66 days is which cognitive neuroscience. It used to be 30, uh, 21 days okay. to make or break a good behavior. Then it was 27 with the NASA and the inversion glasses. And it took the brain um, for the astronauts to be able to see the world upright after they were seeing it upside down for 27 days. Wow. Then cognitive neuroscience did even more testing and brain mapping and they found it takes 66 days. So anybody who's out there who's set in your own way, if you do something different 
for 66 days, you will have a new habit, a new behavior. You'll change those neural sequencing in your brain and you'll be able to alter your genetics and, and change to start doing a new behavior. It's all knowing how to do that. It's having the right information at the right time and the right order. And that's what we provide for people. Right. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, thank you so much to both of you for being here today and congratulations on your new podcast. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, thank You're you welcome. So much. Absolutely. Yes. And so thank you to all those who watched our show today. You can find out more again by following Jody and Jess at Jody Jess pod, right? And all the different social media channels. Yes, right. you got it. Yep. Or jodyjust.com. Yep. Jody with an I. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. And I thank you for being here today. Please do go ahead and leave us a comment. We'd love to connect with you and answer any questions that you have or hear what you're taking away from today's interview. You can always find out more by going to kimoneillcoaching.com or find me on Facebook at Kim O'Neill Coaching and the Every Day is a New Day show. And I thank you for being here. And know that there's always hope. 66 days, 66 days. And your whole world can be different. How awesome is that, right? Oh, yeah. I love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, wherever you are today does not have to be where you are tomorrow, or at least not in 66 days. So have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Ted's, Ted's asking, Ted's saying, come here, Ted's saying, I gotta go potty, mom. Say bye. Thank you. Bye. See you later. I'll see you soon, dear. Oh, okay, bye, guys. Have a great day. See you later. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. bye.